So it turns out that the Dungeons and Dragons film, Honor Among Thieves, is getting rave reviews from the South by Southwest Festival. Um, this article over at Polygon actually says, Honor Among Thieves is everything a D&D fan could want. They give a spoiler-free first look into the world building, the magic, the visuals, and why this movie rocks. And we're going to be diving into this day because I think it bodes well for the film that's coming down the pipeline this summer. And it's something where, as a huge fan of Dungeons & Dragons over the years, I was very nervous about this film, especially watching some of the trailers and you know seeing some of the special effects and kind of hoping because i love chris pine i love chris pine he's a great actor and i just i love everything he does um, michelle rodriguez brings a lot of fun to every role that she plays and i was just kind of secretly hoping that this was going to be the D D film that made people aware of how much fun dungeons and dragons can be because let's face it the jeremy irons film oh oh boy i'll never forget waiting this is in Greeley Colorado when I lived in Greeley many years ago when that film came out and I remember going to my favorite movie theater sat in the parking lot had a little bit of devil's lettuce before I went in I was I was hyped up ready to go was just I'd been anticipating this movie for many many years um, I'd been following all of everything leading up to the film and I went and watched it and I remember sitting there as high as I was and still going oh my god this is one of the worst films I have ever seen in my life. It was so bad. And yet, you know, I've seen it probably six or eight times over the years. And each time I cringe. Um, the lipstick on the, the one bad guy, I forget his name, Damadris or Damadrid or whatever his name is. And Jeremy Irons literally just gave like the most, I mean, he's a brilliant actor. And he gave one of the most horrifically ham-fisted, over-the-top, seed-chewing uh, uh, performances of his career with just like, it was just, it was so bad on so many levels. So there was, you know, this, this trepidation in the back of my mind about what this upcoming Dungeons & Dragons film is going to be like. But it sounds like, it sounds like I don't have much to worry about. And of course, I could always disagree with the reviewers when I eventually see the films, uh, the film in, in cinemas, which actually I don't know if I'll be able to see this one in cinema. I might have to wait till it comes to the home screen. We'll see. It's two and a half hours to the nearest uh place where I can watch a film because I live in the boonies um, and we'll see if I have time to go see this and in, in, I think it comes out in June but anyway let's let's dive into this uh, initial spoiler free take on the D&D film at Polygon this was from the movie's debut at the 2023 South by Southwest conference it says here we're living in a new golden age for fantasy movies and shows gone is the time when epic fantasy adventures were given low budgets that crippled production or scripts that showed open disdain for the genre now elves dragons and magic are as big a part of pop culture zeitgeist as sitcoms sitcoms were in the 90s and yet thanks to the huge success of game of thrones fantasy shows and movies are usually dark and bleak both in tone and in visuals and that's just one of the many reasons why the movie dungeons and dragons honor for thieves honor among thieves is such a shock to the system because it's, it says here it's an attempt to prove that we're finally ready to embrace the fun, chaos, and full-on weirdness of the fantasy genre. Um, I mean, that's, that's true. It can be all of those things. Um, but a D&D campaign can also be whatever the group wants it to be. But, you know, I think that with the success of things like Critical Role and seeing the kids play it on Stranger Things and campaigns like the Dungeon Dudes and, and uh, Acquisitions Incorporated and all those things, we're seeing that people have embraced now that Dungeons & Dragons is part of pop culture in a way that it wasn't even 20 years ago when the other D&D film came out, which is about, it was about 20 years ago. It might even be more than that. I don't remember exactly when that one came out. Like around, I feel like it was around 2000-ish. Anyway. Ah! No, hang on. I accidentally clicked. Wrong button. Um, it says here, what makes D&D unique is the game, is the way the system works as a huge sandbox. No two games are the same, even though players are using so many of the same tools. The new movie from John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein, based on a script by Daly Goldstein and Michael Gilio, feels like an invitation to sit in on the latest session of a campaign that they've been running for years. It says, it feels like you're watching an episode of Critical Role and realizing the group hasn't just crafted a good story out of the blue, but they were playing together for a long time, even before the cameras started rolling. Um, Chris Pine's bard Edgen tells a story about his background so the audience can understand his motivation. 
his actual words, and we see his past adventures with most of the other characters, making the movie feel like the latest chapter in a very long and intricate story. I would also like to say, um, and I don't know if they mention it here in this article because I haven't read this yet, um, there are prequel novels that I know Liam over at Liam's Lyceum has been reading through... I think he reviewed one of them recently on his on his YouTube channel. But I know they've got prequel novels that have come out that are leading up to this film. So people who want to know more about the characters that are going to be in this film, it's not just like they're throwing these characters on the big screen. Like they actually these are actual characters that have fleshed out novels and they have character stats and everything else. I mean, there's a lot going on here. It's not just some haphazard film attempt it's it's a it's a thing where they're blending together novels and stat blocks and characters so you can actually take those characters and, and have them in your campaigns um and your homebrew stuff so i mean it's it's they're really doing a lot of hard work and legwork here to make sure that this is more than just a film it's actually part of the overall dungeons and dragons franchise it says here that's what best stories do they invite you into an expansive intricate world that feels like it's existed long before the characters ended the story and far beyond this particular adventure, Honor Among Thieves aces that world building. It says it names drop several D&D locations like Baldur's Gate and Waterdeep, but the real sense of connection for fans comes in the way the film uses real sets and locations to convey the grandeur and size of the world, populating them with a ton of character and background sites from ruins to ancient monuments. Um, it says the approach feels similar to James Cameron's original Avatar, with a fairly simple, uncomplicated, and often predictable story which allowed Cameron to focus on building a massive world without overwhelming the audience. And that same approach is used here, and it says that it pays off. It says the story of a group of misfits going on a quest to find a magical artifact isn't a complex story, and it's often very predictable, but it's effective and to the point designed to let the characters and the world speak for themselves. It says for viewers who have never played D&D, the movie's world won't be hard to wrap your head around, apart from some of the creatures like dragon people, lizard people, the tabaxi as an example, owl bears, mimics. Um, the film employs a blend of practical effects and CGI. And this is what I complained about. They said here, the, the, the practical effects look incredible, though at times the CGI touch-ups don't blend as well as they could. And that's one of the critiques I've had when I've watched some of the, the trailers is that every time I see the CGI, I kind of cringe a little bit because it's like, ooh, that doesn't look nearly as good as it could given that we're in 2023. So... Hopefully it comes across better on the big screen because sometimes things do come across better on the big screen than on, you know, when you're watching it on a YouTube trailer as an example. So we'll see. Um, they say here it's a testament to the writers trusting the audience that they don't over explain how things work. Um, factions like the Harpers of the Emerald Enclave or the anachronistic technology that puts the movie closer to Willow than Lord of the Rings. It says the main difference here between this and other fantasy franchises is the sweet spot where Honor Among Thieves shines, which is the film's portrayal of magic, which is like unlike anything else on TV or film. There are no wizards waving their wands, suiting CGA rays of light around. Instead, like D&D, they need semantics. They need ingredients, gestures, words, and even concentration to cast their spells which means the movie makes it very clear that there are limitations to magic. Just covering a sorcerer's mouth stops them from casting spells, as an example. By the way, that screenshot is awesome right there. Um, as cool as the magic is, it says here, Daily and Goldstein make sure every member of the main party gets a moment to show off their class skills, from the barbarian Holga in choreographed sequences to Pine's Bard motivating his teammates to accomplish their goals. The standout, it says here, is Sophie Lillis's tiefling druid Doric, who steals the stage with wild shape and a single shot escape through a castle that showcases different creatures and proves that druids are the best class. Fight me. <laughs> I will. I don't think druids are the best class, but they are good. It says, No character feels like they come straight from a gaming session as much as the paladin Jenk. He is the movie's take on the character from Game Night, incredibly serious character surrounded by doofuses. Um, for fans of the game, it says it's a genuine joy to see these dynamics play out. There's an intellect devourer here. Um... They say the movie does a great job of capturing the different tones players might experience from horror to campy fun, from epic high fantasy to a thrilling heist. By the way, the 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 graveyard scene that has been making the rounds on social media the last couple weeks, I can't stop watching it. And I laugh every time I see it where they, they raise the dead, he gets five questions, and he's like, he screws it all up. It's just, oh, it looked incredible. Um yeah, it says the film is playful and earnest, focusing on the fact that for the characters there these are serious situations. Rodriguez Burbian is reeling from a broken relationship. Her storyline pays off in a hilarious way. Um, the game, the movie doesn't try to recreate game mechanics 
as well as uh, or sets of reputation as well as the Legend of Vox Machina, but it's the best D and D movie we could have hoped for. Not only is it a fun fantasy movie, it's a great adaptation of a gaming session, and it's an invitation into a new and more visual version of a world dedicated players already love, and the filmmakers seem to love too. Oh, it's premiering in theaters on March 31st. I thought it was June. Um. Anyway, it sounds like um. It sounds it sounds like people are liking it. The early reviews coming in are very positive about this film, and I'm very hopeful. I know a lot of people are upset because of the OGL thing, and they're like, I'm, get a boy- I'm not one of those people. I'm not boycotting this film. I want to see this film. If I can make it to the city, I'll go see it when it comes out. Um, but if we're not making a trip to the big city, I'll probably just wait for it to, as soon as it's available on uh, downloadable digital format. I will watch it and get you a review as soon as possible. But, um, I'm really looking forward to this. I, I think that... Uh, for me, as a lifelong D and D fan, I've been waiting for a good D and D film, and it sounds like we're finally getting one. I'm still, fingers crossed. I'm hopeful. It sounds like it's gonna be good. Mm. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get more like this here on my channel. Don't forget to support if you can with super chat, super stickers, uh, Patreon page, the memberships here on YouTube and beyond. Don't forget the Discord. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Until then, let me know if you're gonna go see this movie. Comments below. Cheers.